know, with all of the things that were said here this morning, you know, encourage our heart and get us all stirred and ready to hear me read a little Bible. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day. We'll be studying this morning in the book of Colossians. We'll be turning there in the second chapter. What we what we want to really talk to you about is some of the conflicts that uh, some of the Bible people have had and uh, realize how, how hard it was on them mm -hmm. and uh, compare their times to our days. Uh, it's easier on the flesh to live today than it was back during their time, but it's more dangerous too. So in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 1, Paul saying here to the church there, he hadn't been there, but he was, he was writing to them, for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, as many as I have not seen my face in the flesh. And so we see here that, that Paul was, uh, he had several things that had hindered him, mm -hmm. uh, and one was that he went down to Philippi and they put him in jail for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they beat him and banged him. And so uh, that was one of the reasons why he hadn't come to see these people. And they, they were a, a small unit, but they were uh, pretty close to the Lord. But here it says here in verse two, that their hearts might be comforted being knitted together in love and to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. In other words, now he's, he's using some pretty good English language here, but he's, he's uh, writing this and he's saying uh, to comfort their hearts and that they could be more uh, closer drawn to the Lord by uh, you, enjoying the things that they had. Now he says here, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. And this morning, uh, being assured of the uh, understanding that the Lord would have us to do and to understand is very, very uh, important. And, and that's the reason why that we've got churches that call themselves churches scattered all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that's because that the assurance that they give is a false assurance because they are, they're talking of, of works and of everything else that uh, can be done for a man and, and, and satisfy his, his flesh. But here again in, in verse uh, 3 he says, uh, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So here we see that Paul... <coughs> is telling these people, writing to them, and, and, under, and telling them about this assurance, understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. And, the, and, and the, they, they understood it to the point that they were living for the Lord. But he says in verse 4, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Now that's... That is a heavy statement, enticing, mm -hmm. and convincing, uh, uh, slandering you to change your uh, belief and all, and, and, and tricking you and encouraging you. And, and we know this morning that the devil is very shrewd, he's very Amen. sharp, and he has his, his laborers out there. And uh, they don't go around and beat a bit of back out there. They, they go around using these things to hinder people and to distract them to the point that they don't know what's, what's what. So right. he says here, uh, uh, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Now this this is the thing that, that Paul was trying to convince these and tell them and warn them about setting their affections on things of the, of the earth uh, above and not on the planet of the earth. And this is our problem this morning 
with the flesh. We can fight it, we can beat it, we can bang it, and the flesh still rises up against our spirit. And he says, I want this, I want that, we can use this, we can use that. And the thing of it is, it, if you're not very careful, your spirit will get to the point where, well, just let him go. You'll learn, but that ain't the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. No, that ain't. It says it, you, we need the flesh uh, defeated, and we need the spirit to be the one that does it, and it does it through the Holy Spirit, which is Amen. in us. And so we we have a winner, if you want to put it that way. If you if you let it if you let it take place if you let it just keep on and keep on fighting that flesh and and these things that comes in your mind put them out. Amen. Don't 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 sit there and chew on them a while and say, well, I don't know if that's right or wrong because then you're giving your opponent something to convince you of. And when Amen. you say, I don't know uh, whether or not I should do this or do that because then there's doubt. <laughs> And when he finds it out, that's what the little, that's where he wants to get, and he wants to, uh, uh, well, he wants to uh, disencourage you as much as he can. Now here, uh, I'm gonna read uh, verse three then. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now so many people does not understand what the Bible is talking about when, when, you, when you find things like this, when, when Christ, are, for ye are dead, and they, understand, they look at that and they don't understand it. And the first thing you know, they'll run off to someone and say, tell me what that means. Well, it means when you, you're dead in the grave. But no, listen, it's not that. It's, it's when you're dead, when you're dead and your life is healed, that means that you have died to Christ and you're his and it says also here that and your life is hid with christ in god and right. so when someone says and i know we know this but uh you might have an opportunity sometimes to say something to somebody about this but when, when we're dead hey people say oh lord they, they died if you tell them they died you say, i died what more are you doing sitting here if you die? Well, see, that's the that's the thing that the flesh wants to let your spirit be hindered with. And so now in verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. Promise. That's a promise. And he says, mortify or kill therefore your members which are upon the earth. Now these members that are upon the earth, and it gives a whole list of stuff that they want to do, they lust after, and they will, if they can, do these things. But he says, here, you kill that, you, you, you put Man. that down, that they cannot, this, this flesh cannot think upon these things and have a desire to do this because if you let the flesh alone, and it, it will, it will just keep on desiring and desiring, and you'll let it have its way. Right. And say, well, you know, that's that's the way of men, and that's the way of women. But no, listen, don't go that route because it'll be harder for you to get back where you was than it was for you to get where you at. Right. And uh, you'll be you'll be in a whole lot worse shape. So here are some of the things he's he's saying to them. And we've read these things. I want you to understand fornication, uncleanness, inordinate, evil, evil uh, affection, evil conspicuencies and covetousness, which is idolatry. Mm -hmm. For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, Amen. Notice it says children. Mm -hmm. So if you're a child of God, and you continue to do these things. Listen, I believe this morning, he says here, for which things, talking about these up here, say the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. So uh, when you when you can let the spirit continue to uh, have its way or the flesh have its way, uh, and you get in a, uh, in a, in a bad condition, simply, 
then there's something going to have to be done. And uh, and the Lord knows what what will bring you back. And what mm -hmm. will, you know, so uh, for in verse six, for which things the for which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walk sometime when you live in them, but now you put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Listen, that's a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. to put and to be walking around with in your flesh. And that's a great blessing to you when you can put them off. Mm -hmm. And you start letting the Lord replace these things with His Spirit, and uh, it's it's so much it's so much more pleasant to think upon things of of the Lord than it is to think of things upon the devil. And the farther you grow in this, and the farther you get in this, it it just, it just comes automatically, just like when when we're in the flesh and we see something and we think about it. Hey, that's not right. You got to get away from it. You the right. thing of it is, with these other things that God puts in you when you when you're saved, it, it's so much more pleasure. Now I'm going to go this morning uh, again, and we, we were all talking, talking about Paul here, but I'm going to go over to uh, the Book of Philippians just just for a few minutes and turn, if you would, to one chapter one and verse twenty eight. And we're talking, uh, I wanted to bring out some of these things that Paul writing to this church and what Paul has suffered and what Paul went through in order to uh, have the opportunity and to obey the Lord in writing to this church. In, in uh, Philippians 1, 20, 28, 1, 28, uh, and in nothing, terrified by your adversary, Amen. which is to them that evident evident token of perdition or destruction, but to you of salvation and that of God. Amen. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. And this is why we look at some of the Bible characters, and some of them, some of them, it's just unreal how much they suffered and lived. But we can't, we can't belittle God a little bit because He takes care of them. But they, Amen. they went through a whole lot. But here, in verse twenty-nine, four, unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake having the same conflict which ye saw in him and now here to me to me be to be in me. And of course he's he's saying here about uh, having the same conflict which we saw. And Paul understands what Jesus Christ went through mm -hmm. and what the apostles even in the Old Testament went through. And he this is what he's talking about. So with that, I would ask you if you would to turn over to 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 23. He asks the question, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. Now here's Paul's, one of his testimonies about what he had to go through with in order to be able to serve the Lord and to write these letters to the churches. He says, I am more in labor, more, I am more in labor, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison, more frequently, in death often. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is what he was talking about here uh, in, in those ships and things like that. But he says in verse 24, of the Jews, Five times received by forty stripes, save one. So he had thirty-nine stripes. Thence was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. And, and I, I, I thought about this one and the stone that I thought. You remember he was out there and some of the apostles was running with him and they come up there and they, they, they stoned him. 
Mm -hmm. They stoned him and he was laying on the ground and the disciples thought, well, he's dead. But Paul got up. Right. Paul got up and went on in prayer. And if, if you read this a little bit more, he says, he went on back and, and got out of that place, but he come right back and preached on. Amen. So, I mean, he, he didn't, he didn't care for his body. He didn't care for nothing except doing the will of God. Amen. And uh, if we had a little bit more of that, we could uh, we could rejoice in it because uh, that's that's what the spirit within us wants, and that is to use this body to honor and glorify God, and not to uh, go out and honor the world. Amen. And here he says here in verse twenty six. And journeying off in perils of water and perils of robbery and perils by my own countrymen and perils by the heathens and perils in the city and perils in the wilderness and perils in the sea and perils among false brother. Amen. And you remember these perils that he's talking about. One was shipwreck, you know, they was carrying to Rome. Mm -hmm. They were going to carry him to Rome, put him before Caesar, and that's what, of course, that's what he, he said, well, I'll, go, I'll stand before uh, Caesar. And, uh, you know, uh, Paul, when the whole thing was over with, Paul was not the prisoner. They were the prisoners because uh, he, he told them, he said, when they were, they were running up and down this body of water and uh, they couldn't the wind was blowing and they couldn't get to see to to the banks and he says just stay in the ship and you won't, won't be hurt and i think it was 12 or 13 nights that they stayed in there right and you know uh by that time uh they were accusing paul of lying to him and all this stuff but anyway they ran <coughs> Run into this land and uh, got off, and all of them was all of them was well. So uh, this should have really and truly been a, a, a rejoicing uh, and uh, spreading the word. But you don't ever read anything about right. uh, all that's going on. But here he says, uh, I want to thank in verse uh, twenty-eight. Besides those things that are without. That which comes before me daily, the cares of all the churches. Now listen, that's that's his heaviest burden. He could he could let them try to kill him, and he could do this and that. But writing these letters and telling these people about their condition and about the people that were trying to mislead them, that was his harsh desire. Amen. He knew he knew that, and when he when he was going down in Damascus, sir, and God spoke to him, and God talked to him there. Listen, there ain't never been another one that, that got that close to the Lord and, and got that much of a spirit. And and uh, he told me, he said, "You're." He told the one that was going to go with sing. He's a chosen vessel of mine. Amen. And he's going to do these things. And Paul knew it. Paul, I believe Paul, with all his heart, knew what what the Lord wanted him to do from the time he started until he, he died. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it made it it made it easier, but also it made it uh, uh, hard because the thing of it is of the, of the all of these perils that he went through, all of these beatings that he went through, uh, you know, the, the in the jail and all these things, but yet, hey. He'd go to the next city and start preaching. Amen. And so, uh, I mean, it's it's amazing that a human being uh, in the flesh can do that. But now he had a greater to look towards and that was Jesus Christ. Jesus was uh, he had, he had, he was far above all in it, that he had the ability to do all these things, raise the dead, and all this, and. Uh, uh, he died for our sins. Amen. He died for our sins, that, and so Paul couldn't do that. But he could tell. He could tell them, and he told us because listen, they wrote these these letters down, and Paul was wanting to give them to these others to write them down. And so it's our it's our it's our word. It's our it's our word, and we can 
we can read it and we can, and I, 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 I mean the more that we read it and under, we'll understand it more. You know? And listen, it gets to the point of where that when you miss it a day or two, it, it's sort of like doing it something to eat. And you, you, when you're, when you're in good condition with the Lord, you go and, and find your little place and sit down and read, and you have the greatest time. Amen. And uh, it's maybe something that you've uh, wrote, read time and time again. But listen, it's it's never it's never old news. It's Amen. Old news. So here again we see here in uh, verse twenty nine, who is weak and I am not weak. Who is offended, and I burn not. If I must meet glory, I will glory in of the things which concerning my infirmities. Amen. So he said here, he could glory in his infirmities. And uh, that's, that's, that's getting close. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Artis, the king, kept the city of the Damascus with a garrison desiring to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the walls and escaped his yeah. hands. So these things that, that we've read about here this this morning and all, it's 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 just a uh, something that would, would would encourage us to live closer to the Lord and not be concerned about when the flesh gets skin up or when it has to do without something to eat or when it has to go uh, without things that it, it that sometimes it needs. Because I know Paul did, Amen. But the thing of it is, God knows all things, and uh, He He'll take care of you. Uh, and, and you know, you say, well, you say that. But do you believe it? I believe it. Amen. I believe it. And, and you know, the, the good part about it is I've, I've had times when, when the Lord blessed me and, and helped me, and I know He will. And so this is something this morning that we uh, really and truly need to put first on our, on our list is read the Bible. Amen. Study God's Word and pray. And uh, that, that way, you got him first in, in your life, and uh, you'll find that it's a, it's a better place to on earth to be, and that the flesh won't bother you much. Thank you for your, your attention. Amen. Amen.